So let's curious to see what you think happened in 2024. You know, here's some of the headlines that happened in the last year, right? Look at some of these headlines. Tesla raises $80 billion in valuation after Musk's sales warning. Releases fourth quarter, of course, aims to ship Roadster car next year. Awful quarter. Wall Street on edge of delivery numbers, right? Shares fall after deliveries drop 8.5% from a year ago. Um, they talked, Elon talked about RoboTaxi coming on August 8th, 8-8 event. And people think, ah, he's just doing that because he's trying to change the conversation. Aims to launch his FSC software in China, but, you know, nothing has happened in there yet. Of course, they gave guidance now. It's the first quarter of next year. Then he started doing more and more drops of demos of Optimus Bot, and uh, these things are happening. Further, people think that the robotaxi were delayed. There was that article from, uh, was it Reuters? Yeah, that said that, uh, you know. The, I think it was Reuters, the, yeah. The $25,000, the car is no longer available. So just people were get fed, being fed information that was like, some parts true, some parts wrong. Yeah, tell me what you think of um, what happened in 2024. Well, yeah, it's definitely been a, a roller coaster year. I think that's a, a good name for it, especially with the amount of rebound that we've seen in the stock and in the sentiment around the company, you know, over the last few months. It does remind me a lot of some of the pre 2020 days in Tesla, where, you know, I remember just fighting through all the FUD, you know, there was yeah. lots and lots of noise out there about the company and how Elon was a terrible CEO and they were probably going to go bankrupt and uh, just, you know, all these different misconceptions about the cars, about the company. And I, I like those times in the story, actually, because that's usually when you can do a good job leaning into the noise, buying the the story, if you believe in the long term. And um, so that's when I, you know, I built most of my allocation in Tesla between 2018 and 2019. And I didn't really have dry powder to go heavier into the story here over the last year. Um, but for those people who did, I think those were the conditions that are ideal entry points into a story like Tesla, where their ambitions are so grand. And if they are able to execute on the story, there's a lot more room to run. Um, but if you like to be strategic about when you get in, then you'd rather get in when everybody doubts and when everybody hates it compared to when everyone is just, you know, having a, a heyday and there's a party and the bulls are all happy. But, uh, you know, when you're buying point in the cycle, when everyone's excited, then usually that makes it harder for you to outperform on that over the near term, not necessarily over the long term. So I think that we've seen both of those seasons now in the same single year. There have been some great buying opportunities. Um, and then there have been some, you know, probably good selling opportunities here recently. Um, we'll have to see moving forward if uh, the normal pattern holds for Tesla stock. Uh, usually the end of the year is always really good. And then the beginning of the year, not so much. So we could see some headwinds in Q1 and Q2 of next year, unless we just see some massive levels of execution and some game changing results in the financials. Um, but that's just kind of the, the cycle of things. And for Someone like myself who, you know, I'm just buying and holding and um, I have like a very small exposure to some leap contracts that I have held and will continue to hold. Then, you know, it all is just uh, the the normal noise and the normal cycles of listening to the the market scream prices at you like Warren Buffett likes to talk about, you know, being in the stock market is like having someone come to your house and just scream amounts that they're willing <laughs> to pay you for your house every day. And uh, if you're not planning to sell, then after a while, you're like, okay, whatever. It's everything you said, of course, it's easier said than it is done. Going through those, you know, drops, the sentiment fell, everybody seems to be just saying the company's not doing well. And it's hard because, so I, I personally track 
right? And I know you do too. It's about the business and the product. And are we seeing milestones? Are we seeing progress? But 2024, there were, you know, some things that did not happen that we were expecting to happen. Um, and that's why it's a little hard. Not, I'm not saying that in any way was I ever influenced to think at all that Tesla's not going to succeed. No, it is. But it was just that, you know, that it's been three years, right? The stock's been mm -hmm. flat, went up, went down significantly the last two, three years. It's been flat. So we started getting through that mode of, is anything going to make this stock move? But we follow the milestones. That's what I've been doing. And here's, you know, 2024. And it's actually a lot shorter than it was in 22 and 23. Uh, of course, 24 is blown up like crazy, but uh, 25, I mean, but 24, because things like, you know, we thought Giga Nueva Leon groundbreaking, we thought there'd be another uh, factory out there and there was a lot of movement that it was about to happen and then it didn't happen. We did continue to get bot demos and that, that was very, very exciting. Of course, at the very beginning of the year, everybody, most people were very doubtful that the bot was anything, but with by the third month, with all the demos, not just from Tesla, but all the other car uh, robot companies. And then the ability to show them doing autonomous work was just amazing. And the FSD, that was when we got the 12, right? Remember that was the big, yep. that was the defining moment. When 12 came, it was like, oh, end to end neural net is going to work. It's, it's, it's showing signs that that was the actual thing. And yet it wasn't quite yet ready to do anything. Um, we were waiting for, of course, the compact car unveil, which happened in October. And this is basically when things turn. But you see what I mean? Like from the beginning to October, it's actually very few milestones that the company did. I can agree with you on the n discrete number of milestones, but I think the significance of the mm. milestones this year has been massive. And so that's one of the reasons for me as a long-term holder, 2024 was a phenomenal year because we, we did three things that are just mm. insane. The rollout of an end-to-end -end neural network, like it's just one of the things in your list here, but that is massive, 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 huge implications. And especially then one thing that's not on your list that I think mm -hmm. is huge for the completion of the story is that first we built out Cortex yeah. with its yeah. almost, you know, it's probably got 80,000 ish H 100s in it this yeah. year. Um, so we built that out, but then we trained a model on it. We shipped it to customers and it blew everyone away. So that those three things being able to build out a ginormous cutting edge cluster, probably when it was, if, so this is a little bit of speculation, but, if the 50,000 cluster of H100s that Tesla had was coherent, then what that means is that Cortex was the first cluster beyond 30,000 H100 GPUs, GPUs to be made coherent. Yeah. I don't know if it was or was not coherent. It's highly possible that it was. If it was, that was a phenomenal technical breakthrough that went completely under the radar and then quickly got surpassed by XAI with their 100,000 H100s. Um, if they were not coherent, they can easily be made coherent now. Um, and then all of that is, you know, nerdy mumbo jumbo to most people, but what it shows up in is the results of version 13 being shipped to customers in yeah. the year and it being a massive leap forward. So we are, we got to, to neural nets and the reason we're like, oh yes, finally we have an end to end neural network architecture is because not because version 12 was going to solve everything, but because an end to end neural network approach was the scalable solution. It scalable. is the A architecture that can potentially yeah. get us if, there. And yeah. version 13 shows you how much each of these end-to-end -end neural network steps is able to progress the state of the technology forward. So we we shipped the first A architecture, then we, and I'll call uh, FSD version 12, probably like a, a D in this A architecture. So version 12 is good. Uh, it solved a whole bunch of problems, but man, it, it also has weaknesses. And then 
version 13.2 looks to be at least a B execution yeah. on an A architecture. So 12 is a D or execution on a, an A architecture. 13 is a B architecture on an A or a B execution on an A architecture. Um, and that's the, the initial rollout of version yeah. 13. We could see the future versions of 13 with a three times context window potentially get us all the way into the A execution on an A architecture. Wow. And then we're guaranteed, you know, if we've done all of that, like we didn't even start working on version 13 until the second half of this year. So yeah. the, the lag time of starting to work on it to shipping it to customers is inside of six months. So by the end of 2025, I think the likelihood that we're able to deliver unsupervised uh, FSD wide to customers by the end of 2025, like the probability of that just went up by at least an order of magnitude. You know, <laughs> we can see yeah. line of sight to to that happening so that's all huge yeah. um and that's really been the the bull thesis around tesla their ability to justifiably be able to earn that a four or five six trillion dollar market cap sometime in the not too distant you know medium term future is all centered on full self-driving being unsupervised at the very least being robo taxi uh hopefully even above and beyond that and they executed on key milestones this year that make that much, much more likely. Then, like you said with the bot, like the the bot development that we've seen this year, both from Tesla's team, but also from other players, from Aptronic, from Figure AI. I think we just saw an announcement today that Aptronic has a partnership with Google um, and their DeepMind team, we've seen that um, Figure has a partnership with OpenAI, that AI is coming to embodied robotics, and the humanoid form factor is going to be an incredible platform for that embodied intelligence. Um, and Tesla is right there, at least neck and neck, with the progress of all those other ones, and then you layer in, well, they have an advantage in training hardware. They kind of have an advantage in manufacturing experience. So like, I would say the risk profile for Tesla's execution in the Optimus project is lower than the risk profile for an Aptronic or a Figure AI. That doesn't mean that Figure and Aptronic can't succeed. It just means that they have some bigger hurdles in their way than Tesla does. Um, and that the size of the market, like all three of them can honestly succeed in a massive way all at the same time because the TAM for humanoid robots is so incredibly large, so much beyond you know what most people even imagine. And so legitimizing that as a Musk option that still lives out above and beyond the robo taxi future or the fsd unsupervised future that is already a massive win for investors like the those follow on huge business expanding possibilities continue to get created every few years in yeah. tesla you did such a great job summarizing that um those three big things that happened in 2024 um you know it's just it, it really is a lot of progress. It's just that when you compare what happened in the first month to what happened in just the last month or two, right? The first month was signals. Right? You got your you got your FSD 12. That's okay, that's a rate leap, but it's not perfect, but it shows you that end to end's working. Uh, they invested, they started investing in data centers. So you're going, okay, they're, they, they're working on that. And then, you know, then all of a sudden, by the last month of this year, 2024, that's when you saw 13, it really is an exponential curve scale up. Oh, they've actually did implement those two super clusters so quickly, so fast. And now you're going, okay. And then the bot, they finally showed you the bot almost clear to what they're calling uh, V. It's actually third, ver uh, the third version, but it's going to be V1 ready for next year for production. You can see it ready to go with the hands and so forth. So 
You know what I mean? Like, it, it, does this rise in the stock in the last three months, which was triggered because of the election, it's almost like it was because of the election, not because of the things we saw, which is everything is now coming together. Yeah. Uh, that's, I yeah. mean, I, I definitely would attribute a lot of the the gains to the election moving, like we've talked about, from yeah. a government headwind to a government tailwind. That's big. But I also can't discount the fact that Brad Gerstner just sold a billion dollars worth of Uber so that he mm -hmm. could invest in Tesla. And that's not to say that all of Wall Street or all of VC or all of institutions are necessarily ready to make that bet. But I definitely think it's more than just Brad Gerstner. He's a leader. There's going to be some people that are thinking about this space and seeing him make that move at this point in time will cause them to go ahead. Like they probably were like, mm, I, I need to think about this as a possibility. And I think now that that has released yeah. some capital. So I actually do think at Third. least some of this move is attributable just to FSD. Um, yeah. And then I have no idea what the size of the market is for, you know, pursuing these humanoid robotic startups at this stage and who's willing, you know, a lot of people who want to do that, they're going to want to make a uh, isolated bet on that. So they're going to want to invest in either figure or Abtronic because it's not attached to this other business where they have to take a bunch of risk on execution that's related to businesses that they don't know, businesses that they don't care about. Um, so there's going to be that factor, how much of the overall capital that wants to flow into this space will flow to Tesla kind of remains to be seen, but I wouldn't even put that off the table mm -hmm. that uh, with the advancements that we've seen 